last week was a crazy week for gold as few analysts were expecting the level of hawkishness from the Fed. But can the yellow metal retain its charm? Joining me down the line to discuss is Suckton Financial's Steve Hardcastle. Steve, this year gold has tumbled 22%, heading for the first annual drop since 2000, and as a result, some investors seem to have lost faith in the metal amid the rally in equities and low inflation. Now, while current fundamentals for gold are looking weak on the back of this changing investor perception, according to some analysts, demand for the commodity in the long run will remain intact. But what do you think? I think that, yes, you're certainly correct in so far as the price has dropped by 22% over the course of the last year. But you must also bear in mind that this drop is from an extremely high level. As you know, gold has been a safe haven for the past few years in the face of the, the worst excesses on the effects of the recession that we've experienced over the past five years or so, with uh, banking uh, issues, lack of liquidity, sovereign debt, looking at Greece, Cyprus, uh, European sovereign nations generally. Uh, confidence uh, was hit very, very badly, and yields in, inter in alternative investments, uh, geopolitical events, uh, spring, etc., all impacted the uh, demand for gold insofar as it was the, uh, the safest uh, uh, receptacle for, for monies um, at that time. Having said that, gold still is the, the, the safe haven, although the market uh, situation has now changed insofar as the economies and the banking system is um, on a much more level footing than it was in recent years. Now, despite any talk of a Fed tapering delay, some analysts have said that several factors are setting a fragile floor for gold in the near term, such as dollar strength against the euro, an uptick in 10-year treasuries and weaker than expected seasonal demand from India. Are these the main concerns for gold at present? Well, yes. Having said that, the fundamental picture for gold is still relatively strong. Uh, it, and it, there was a demand for gold coming through as prices fell through down towards $400 from, from Fisa in the north of Europe, uh, head of the, the, the Syrian uh, situation which took place in, in July. Indian imports increased strongly on retail demand for jewelry and cars during the second quarter. And demand for, from these sectors, from India and China, as well as 1,000 tons of gold uh, during that period. Indian buying has been curtailed to an extent by government taxation increases to curb the uh, current account deficits in that country. The demand is still is still good. With regard to Fed tapering, etc., this is an extremely difficult difficult question insofar as the the main market drivers looking forward are likely to be the, the dollar, the state of the dollar, inflation and consequent interest rates. The pursuing negotiations in February and the move of the Fed regarding QE tapering not helped sentiment wise by the appointment of a new chairman of the Fed. The emergence of the world economies is starting to happen and the impact, the consequent in impacts on investments uh, will potentially be attracted to other asset classes, particularly equities. That's quite a list of issues uh, affecting gold. Um, but if you actually stand back and, and look uh, more objectively at what's going on, now it is likely that the, the current politicising of the, the debt ceiling negotiations will probably not have the same, um, probably won't be so vocal and intense as, as we saw last month, and the negotiations will have less impact. Now, we have spoken about the dangers, but how confident are you that as the global economic scenario settles, a rerun in gold investment could be seen? Will it recover to the same levels as before, do you think? Uh, the short answer is no, I don't think so. The gold reached a high of eighteen or $1,900 at the height of the, the, the recessionary problems and the sub-debts, the, the sovereign debt problems, etc. Not to mention the, the, the Arab Spring and everything that was going on at that time. And of course, with the issues in Cyprus and the, the, the strange decisions that were taken at that time. So, no, I don't see gold uh, rising uh, to that sort of area, not for some time yet, anyway. 
And now there is no denying the fact that we are witnessing a bear demand phase in gold this year. But gold prices have remained largely steady and have not increased despite weakness in the dollar index. But what is your outlook over, say, the next six months? Well, firstly, the bear demand phase is a reflection from the extremely high levels following all those issues that were going on earlier. And the heat has now come out uh, to a large extent, gone out of uh, the, the bigger macroeconomic picture. This has led to price stabilising just above marginal production cost levels, and there is no sign yet of uh, central bank sales. In fact, uh, the central banks are more likely to be buyers than sellers. So looking forward, I would imagine that we've probably seen the base for gold down at uh, towards 1200. I think that the, the price will be much more stable, and I can look forward to a range of somewhere between 1300 and 1450, assuming that we have no, no major um, political impact taking place. Steve, thank you so much for your time today. Lovely to speak to you. Well, viewers, that's all from me at the moment, but make sure you click back for Natalie McDonald's interview looking at the latest data from India and the rupee. Goodbye for now.